Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We appreciate you being here with us. You can see on your screen, that is Rockford Ice Hogs goalie Drew Camesso. We're going to get to him in a second, but before we do, make sure you smash that like button for us on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Same deal on your favorite podcast app. Uh, subscribe, five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I'm saying mm-hmm. and today. We're going to challenge our listeners. Uh, but yeah. Drew, thanks for being with us. Congrats on being named the Rockford Ice Hogs Player of the Month. Two and one, a shutout, and a 906 save percentage. It's a good start, man. Congratulations. Thanks for having me. First of all, thanks for the introduction. I'm, I'm excited to you know chat some hockey. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. How's it, uh, how's it been transitioning uh, to the, uh, the, the pro game with Rockford here these uh, first couple of weeks? It's been a little different than what I'm what I'm used to. I'm you know not gonna lie. It's college is a much different schedule. Um, the day to day is much different. So it's definitely an adjustment for me. But it's one that you know I'm I'm taking in and I'm enjoying for sure. Um, you know, not having classes outside of hockey has been really really nice. Um, you know, allows me to you know recover more. You know, take some more time at the rink. So, like I said, it's it's definitely been a change, but it's been one that's been really good. Yeah, no more uh, papers to write, right? <laughs> Yeah, luckily not. <laughs> Outside of the schedule, like getting used to the schedule of the pro game, in between, you know, the whistles, what, what's been the biggest difference between the college ranks and the AHL? I mean, I know you have some experience, you know, world championships and, and, and Olympics playing against pros, but what's been the biggest adjustment from college to pros in-game for you so far? I think the speed and, you know, just how everybody is really good. Um, you know, the big thing I noticed was, you know, in practice when I was fortunate to come here last year, it's just that everyone can shoot, uh, everyone can make plays. It, it doesn't really matter who you are. Everyone's so talented. And, um, you know, I think that helps me, right? And, you know, in college, I could, you know, get away with some doing some things. And, you know, here is, um, you know, you, you have to be pushed every day in practice. Um, you have to give it your all. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, the guys are bigger and I, I'd say, Probably the biggest adjustment, um, you know, I've had to make uh, so far has been just looking through traffic and, you know, guys get to the net a lot harder and, um, you know, a lot bigger and stuff. So my D have been doing a great job so far. I know we've, you know, we've been working on it a lot. So I know as I go on, I'm going to continue to learn stuff, um, you know, have things I, I work on and, and things like that. We know you're a confident guy as, you know, most successful goaltenders have to be, but have you sort of surprised yourself a little bit with how with how kind of seamless your game has been transitioning from college to pro? You're off to a fantastic start. Are you a little bit surprised in yourself? Not really. I, I think I, I you know try and be as confident as I can be. Um, I think you have to, um, you know, in order to be a good goaltender. You know, you, it's such a mental game, and um, you know, I put in a ton of work this summer. Um, you know, put a, a bunch of weight on, a bunch of muscle to get ready for the season. So. Um, yeah, you know, right now it's all about learning, you know, being a sponge, playing the best I can. And I'm new to this whole thing, too. So uh, I'm trying to learn from all the older guys, you know, take everything from every game. And, um, you know, I'm in college. I'm, you know, kind of used to playing every single game. I'd never really, um, you know, dressed for games and not played. So, you know, that's something that, um, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of getting used to. And, um, you know, just even trying to take, you know, things away from that. I've, you know, even when I'm not playing. Um, if I'm not on the bench, you know, I, I, I've started to take notes on other goalies um, to see what, what they're doing, what makes them successful, um, you know, and how they play and stuff like that. Because, you know, pretty much everyone, every goal in this league has played more games um, than I have. So I'm just trying to, you know, learn as much as I can, um, you know, take stuff from everybody and be a great teammate and, um, you know, continue to stop pucks. <laughs> how, how is that mentally as a goalie? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's such a different position. Uh, in hockey compared to, you know, forwards and defensemen and, and everything like that. But how is that to kind of go through the preparation throughout the week for a game? And then, you know, every, everyone's getting amped up. You're in the dressing room. You go out for, for warm-ups and everything. You feel the puck a little bit. And then you sit for 60 minutes. Like, what what is that like mentally for, for a goalie to kind of sit there? Like, what are you taking in during that time and, like, you know, the the times where you have to kind of sometimes go in cold to a game like what is that like mentally preparation wise it's pretty much the same um you know whether i'm i'm playing or not um you know i'm, I'm doing the same thing um you know that day just always be prepared you, ne- you never know what could happen in pro hockey so um that's kind of one thing i've learned 
in terms of uh, during the actual game, like I said, I'm, this is pretty new to me. Um, you know, in college, I was fortunate. Pretty much, you know, every time I suited up, I was I was on the ice. So, um, you know, I never really got to experience it. And, you know, my kind of viewpoint of it now is, you know, when I'm not playing, I need to be doing something to get better as well. And, you know, doing something to separate myself, even if I'm not on the ice. So, um, you know, I've been bringing a notepad, um, taking notes on the goalies, um, you know, tendencies guys have, like, you know, what makes them look good, what makes them be successful and things like that. So I figured, you know, if I'm not playing, I could find a way to get better somehow. So I'm sure I'll find some more ways, you know, coming up. Speaking of other goalies and trying to implement what they do, you told us during training camp that you, you did uh, some of Andre Vasilevsky's workouts in the off season to prepare for this year. Uh, can you kind of maybe share exactly what that entailed the, differently than what you've done in the past? And have you noticed a difference now that you've been able to get some games on your belt since doing that uh, after doing that training program? I for sure noticed a difference. I think in the summer it was a lot more, um, you know, rigid and routine based. I was stretching a lot more than I was, I was used to. And I was also eating a lot more than I was used to. I know coming to the, the pro game, it's, it's way more demanding on your body. I knew how to put on some muscle and, um, you know, in terms of, you know, his routine and things like that, I knew that um, how flexible he is and how explosive he is. And I knew that was one facet of, of my game that I really wanted to improve. So I was stretching as much as I could, um, you know, doing yoga classes. That was one thing that I, I thought was really nice this summer. Um, you know, now that I kind of was on my own, had some, some of my own money that I could invest in my training and, and things like that was I was doing yoga three times a week and, you know, a lot of the, the sessions were harder than my workouts and my on ice sessions was just, you know, how demanding and, and it was. And for me, I've already noticed such a difference. Um, you know, those, those three sessions a week have really been um, great for me so far. And I'm going to continue those habits throughout the season and, you know, hopefully pick up some new ones that help me as a goalie and, and just help me as a person in life too. It's, you know, you still have a, still a life away from the rink and still our person. And I think a lot of the habits I do um, really build both of that. You seem like a huge student of the game. It's, it's cool to hear that. And I wonder, you know, there's obviously Vasilevsky is one of the best goalies in, in the world, uh, arguably the best. If you want to go through the list someday, we can. But, like, what was it about him that you said, that's the that's the guy who I'm going to, you know, try to try to be like that's the guy who I'm going to try to copy in terms of my workout and stuff. Was it, is it is his workout like famously published somewhere? Or was he did, or did you see a similar play style? What was it about Vasilevsky specifically that made you cling to his training methods? Well, yeah, I was kind of asking um, asking you know trainers and stuff around. Was like, you know, what are these guys doing that separates themselves? So obviously, there's so many good goalies in the league, but um, you know, I want to be great and I want to learn from the best and you know. He's just so explosive um, and his body is, he's so flexible and he makes these saves that, you know, people always are like, wow, you know, how in the world does he do that? And I figured that, you know, whatever he's been doing has been working. So, um, yeah, I really just um, tried to follow his plan as much as I could, um, you know, and I've really noticed a difference, especially with my hips and, um, you know, just my flexibility on the ice. I think, you know, his routine has really helped me a lot. Go ahead. I was going to say, were there any goalies that, uh, you know, you watched growing up that, you know, you look to to maybe emulate a little bit of their of their style when you were younger? And has that translated to, you know, as you've gone through college and now uh, into the pro game, any guys that you you looked at and said, you know, they do they do this well. I want to try and study up on that and, and try and emulate that. Yeah, I was super fortunate. We had seen tickets to the Bruins pretty much my whole life. And um, even before I started playing goalie there, um, three rows behind Tuka Rask. So I was there for a lot of, a lot of his games. And um, I actually got to meet him at, at Boston University training um, a few times. So that was really cool for me um, just to watch him, you know, play and, you know, go throughout his career and learn tips from him. As uh, techni technically speaking, um, you know, I think I watch a lot of Jeremy Swayman and Igor Shesterkin, those are the two guys that I think I, I play a lot, like especially Shesterkin, um, you know, we're the same weight, same height, and, um, you know, both, you know, pretty athletic guys. And I just watched so much of, of them too. And, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to spend pretty much the whole summer with Jeremy in Boston, um, working out together, training together, and skating together. So, um, you know, I owe a ton to him, learned so much from him. We're, we're still in contact a bunch. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, 
I'm young. I know that. And I know I have a lot of room to grow and I'm just trying to learn things from everyone that I can. Did you have season tickets in 2013? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I w wasn't at the game. Um, <laughs> I do remember it though. And, uh, yeah, as a, you know, as a, as a Boston fan, it, it stung a lot. <laughs> um, you know, it was, it was pretty funny looking back at, you know, how everything played out. But yeah, I remember, I think I was in, I was in tears for sure. <laughs> yeah. We, we talked to Ryan Donato mentioned that too. when he uh, talked to the Chicago media for the first time as a Boston kid that 17 seconds broke his heart and Connor <laughs> Bedard has shared some stories about being a Canucks fan and <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. uh, Hopefully you and a hawk sweater can can break some hearts down the road here too. And I, we kind of wonder, you know, we are all caught up here that the entire city is in Connor Bedard mania, and you're a guy who's had the opportunity to uh, play against him in training camp and development camp and those sort of things. And everyone talks about the shot from a goalie's perspective when you're facing Connor Bedard. What is that like? What what, what, what was your reaction the first time you saw a puck come off his stick? Yeah, so I think kind of the first time that I I. Uh heard about Connor was at World Juniors and it was my first World Juniors and he was playing in it and I think he had four goals in one of the games and as everyone's talking about this you know double underage or you know lighting it up so that was the first time I heard about his shot um, first time I got to go against him was in training camp yeah and uh, yeah he has the best shot I've ever been on the ice with um, I've, I've skated with so many great players um, especially in Boston a ton of NHL guys and his release and the speed that comes off is just different. Um, I don't really know anything else to any other way to put it. It's just, it's so great. And, um, you know, can't say enough great things about him, just how he carries himself. And obviously everyone, you know, hears about how great he is of a player, but, um, I, you know, I think he's an even better person off the ice, like just his maturity and how he approaches things and how he handles everything. It's just so impressive. Um, you know, and I know he's, he's going to be a great player. Just, because of his habits, his work ethic, and the person that he is. A lot of people talk about his ability to change the angle of his shot in short order. And I think, you know, to the uneducated or the uneducated is the wrong word, but like to the inexperienced hockey fan, like you wouldn't think that moving your stick blade from here to here is going to make that big of a difference on a goalie. Does that make a huge difference when you're trying to line up and square up to him as a shooter? Does that like foot or two one way or the other make a big difference in the shot coming in? It does. I think, you know, when you, at the end of the day, when you look at it, it's all geometry, it's, you know, it's angles and, you know, it's what the puck sees. And, um, you know, if you were to put your eyes at the puck and, um, you know, look at the net with a goalie in it, you'd see some open space. And if you dragged it, you know, a few inches to the left, you're going to see a lot more open space than you did. So, um, you know, I think that's what makes his shot so effective. Um, you know, it's something that as a goalie, you know, where, you know, we're working to, to stop and um, we're always adjusting, always learning new things. Um, and, you know, we're adapting just like the players are. So, you know, his shot is, um, is one that only, you know, will make me better in, in practice and stuff. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been great to go against him. Are you uh, kind of looking at it as maybe a breath of fresh air that you won't have to go against him, but only in practice for the foreseeable future and not have to really face him in the, in the, in the game situation? And how do you think that that will, like, translate to – you know, your game as you progress, knowing that he has one of these shots that is, you know, top of the NHL caliber already. Yeah, I think as a goalie, it's it's only going to help me, um, you know, and help the, the goalies in practice when you're seeing a, a shot of that caliber every day. You know, it's great. And, you know, obviously, once you get to the NHL, so many guys have great shots. And, um, you know, Connor's definitely up there with, with the best. And, um, you know, that's, you know, for a good reason, um, his work ethic and everything like that. So, yeah, I guess, you know, being in the same organization as him, it's, you know, it's it's pretty nice to not have to face him in a game. And it's pretty exciting to be able to face him every day um, because, you know, as a goal, you want the best shooters and you want the hardest shot to save every day. And uh, he's definitely up there. Kind of speaking of practice, I mean, I, I covered the AHL for a, a handful of seasons. There's so many ebbs and flow of an AHL season. It's so weird how teams just go up and down throughout the course of the year. You guys have already kind of had one of those little bumps where you had a four-game winning streak and then 0-3 last week. When you go through a week last week where you lose all three games, are you 
would you rather just get right back out there and play, or do you appreciate having four or five days off in a row to kind of get on the ice and work on things? I mean, personally, if I, if I could play every day, I would. Um, I, I, you know, I love playing the games. It's the best part of the week. Um, you know, it's something that I'm getting used to as well as the schedule being different. And, um, you know, I think last year at BU, I think we only lost like, you know, nine games or something like that all season. So, um, you know, for me, it's kind of just it's having a, uh, a mentality that's just move on, you know, right after the game, kind of. Um, I try to have the exact same approach. You know, whether I, we won, whether we lost, whether I played great, play, played, you know, okay, or, um, you know, I try to be the same person, um, you know, walking out of the rink. I think, you know, you're only a hockey player, um, you know, when you're at the rink. And um, I think if you were to, you know, see me after the game, you, you know, you wouldn't really know how I played or if we won or things like that. So, you know, obviously I'm learning and, and uh, I'm new to this too. So, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, take everything in and have the best mindset and best approach that I can. I'm curious, you know, during the season, how much contact do you have with the big club? Like, does Jimmy Way check in now and again? Do you hear from Kyle Davidson, or is the staff at Rockford pretty much just given like a plan for you, and they and they just handle it all on their end? Uh yeah, you know, they've been they've been pretty great so far. Just letting me go out there and play hockey. Um, you know, I know my my agent, you know, handles a bunch of that stuff, communication. But yeah, they've always been, you know, really since I've been drafted, they've. They've been, you know, fantastic of, you know, just letting, let me play hockey and, uh, you know, checking in here and there. They have so many resources that um, I'm super fortunate to be able to use and, and things like that. But, yeah, for the most part, it's, right now it's just, you know, playing hockey, having fun and, um, you know, checking in here and there. Is there any indication from them that you might get a chance to come up and play with the big club this year? Um, or, is, or have you been communicated to the plan at all, really? Uh, I mean, you know, that's something that I, I really can't control. It's, um, you know, if, if it happens, great. I, obviously, I'm, I'm going to work my hardest down here and, you know, be the best teammate, best goalie that I can. And that's a decision that isn't in my control. You know, I can just control how I perform on the ice and my attitude and things like that. So, um, you know, when the time comes, I'll, I'll definitely be ready. And, um, you know, I'm just working hard every day for, you know, when that day comes. All right. There's a burning question we had. Um... We know you've been number 29 for a long time, and then uh, all of a sudden you skate out with 33 on your back to start the uh, season. Was there a, a particular reason for the, for the number change, uh, or was it just something you wanted to do on your own? They let me know uh, pretty early on, I think in the summer, that, um, well, now it's been announced, but they're retiring Corey Crawford's 29 in Rockford, so um, I kind of was like, you know, taken off guard a little bit because I, I, I've been wearing 29 for so long. So I came up with 33 um, just because I, I have two S's in my last name and I have two M's as well. Um, and I think it was, you know, having 33 kind of match the two M's, two S's, it looked, you know, pretty similar. So not too much thought behind that one. Um, but yeah, with obviously with Chicago, I'll, I'll be 29. Drew, that is, uh, I will be honest, I asked a, a, lot of, a lot of you guys about numbers this summer. That is more thought than I think most of the guys had uh, into their numbers. So don't sell yourself short there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, actually, I actually like it um, you know, more, more than I thought. I think it looks great. So I'm not, I'm not a huge number guy. You know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, too crazy about that. So. Yeah. That's, no, that's, that's good. And, and, yeah, I think we all kind of had that little – little uh thought when the the number change happened coinciding with the uh the announcement of the rockford ring of honor um i did want to ask you know you guys uh have a, a young group with uh with with your your ice hawks teammates a lot of rookies a lot of first year guys um how are you all you know gelling together um with kind of the thought process of like you know from from the blackhawks fandom a lot of you guys are are part of what we're all looking at is like this next kind of young core group of players that have the expectation to kind of like come up together and, and kind of be that next generation in Chicago. How are you guys gelling together? It's been great. I think I've said it really since day one, the, the character guys that the Blackhawks are drafting have, have been unbelievable. I haven't met, um, you know, a bad, you know, bad prospect off the ice yet. They've all been incredible guys. I think that, that helps so much. Um, you know, some of the best teams I've ever been on is filled with great individuals that are, you know, great people and, you know, come together. And 
I think that kind of makes it easy for us, um, you know, just playing together and things like that is, you know, we all push each other really hard. We all obviously have the same common goal is to play for the Blackhawks and, you know, be a key piece in that. So I think just having guys that have similar mindsets, similar attitudes and approaches to the game helps everyone. And like you said, we have we have a really young team. We have a lot of those guys. So, um, you know, for me, it's it's pretty exciting. It's pretty fun to be able to share the ice with them and, you know, get close with them. Um, you know, we've already gotten really close as a, as a prospect pool. I know the, the off-ice development camp this summer was great. So, Are there any uh, maybe inter-team rivalries between uh, the college guys and the, the CHL guys at all? Yeah, there, there for sure is. I think it's a, it's a never-ending battle of uh, – <laughs> chirps i you know i think the the canadian guys you know sometimes get a bit delusional but um i think it's a, it's a healthy rivalry and it's it's one that uh is brought up you know pretty much every day i think um you know i'm living with two other college guys and um, i know a lot of the, the major junior guys are living together so it's it's a, it's a fun rivalry but it's one that's you know healthy and uh, it's great how much does uh, nolan allen talk about the dub yeah, it's never ending. Um, Del Mastro as well. There, um, you know, it's pretty funny um, to be honest with you. It's it's great, but um, yeah, it's 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 just a healthy healthy rivalry. It's uh, you know, it's pretty funny. It's good stuff. We got a preview of your uh, mask on uh, from Dave Art on Twitter. There it looks pretty sweet. Uh, you want to talk us through the design there? What the yeah. ideas were? We weren't really able to see it uh, before the season started. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd love to. I think. He did a great job. I was supposed to work with him a few times before, but um, it just didn't didn't end up happening. So I was I was pumped to finally get to work together. Um, I've always kind of done the stripe down the middle. Um, it's something that in my helmets I've I've really just enjoyed. So um, we did that down the middle. I think you can see the the little yellow writing there in the black um, down the middle is actually from um, the Blackhawks logo um, in the hair. So. Um, that design's really cool, kind of a neat touch if, if you really look into it. And then I put the skyline of Chicago in, in the bottom. Um, I really just wanted to kind of be like a Chicago full mask. Um, I think he did a great job of really showing that. We've got the retro logo on the right side and then their alternate logo on the left. Um, and then I had I had 29 at the bottom, but obviously, um, you know, can't be wearing that um, with Rockford and obviously switching numbers. So... Um, I, I put the city of Chicago flag, um, you know, I think it, it came out great as a nice touch. And then I put my three dogs on the back of the mask. Um, nice. it, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty close with, you know, all three of them. I, I love that. That was kind of like the best part of going home is hanging with my dog. So just having them on there, um, you know, to look at when, you know, maybe the game's not going great or it's a long day or something like that. So that's awesome. Yeah, we are uh, definitely not going to be mad at you for putting a black and white Chicago flag on your mask. It kind of looks like uh, <laughs> yeah, no, kind of looks, looks like looks our good. logo. So, what'd you say? You, you're the official uh, goalie <laughs> of CHGO. <Yeah. laughs> That's great. Yeah, hopefully I'll uh, I'll have some you know some uh, great designs. Yeah, I'm sure coming up, and I, I have some uh, some new pads that I think the fans are really going to like. Um, coming should be coming really shortly. So I'm excited to start wearing those. Yeah, I've, awesome. I've always been a fan of the uh, the expression from from the goalies on their masks. gets us gives us a good insight and uh, you know who's behind the mask. There, it's good stuff. Do you have a uh, Chicago goalies have always had cool masks from Eddie Belfour and Jeff Hackett had an awesome mask and Jocelyn Tebow had a great mask. And is there any goalie in history that that mask maybe was your favorite? Maybe not even a hawk, but one that stood out to you. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think when thinking of my designs, I uh, I looked up a bunch of the Hawks masks, and there there's so many that have just been like amazing. I think my next one, I, I think I'm definitely, um, you know, maybe add some more flair to it. My first mask, I kind of just wanted to keep simple and, you know, not overdo it. But I actually saw Corey Crawford had like an amazing mask. It almost looked like a, uh, it was like, almost like the Blackhawk head on his um, his mask with like you know feathers going back, and it's pretty much all black and red. Um, you know, when he was here and, um, you know, that one was amazing. And then, you know, I hate to, hate to bring it up on the Chicago podcast, but yeah, Tuca's helmet was, uh, was one that I always loved. Um, he yeah, had just such a classic design and I don't, I honestly don't think he ever switched his design. It was a, it was a helmet where if you, you saw it, you knew it was him. So, 
Um, you know, maybe I'll have to get something like that going. But yeah, there's, there's been a lot of amazing ones. The, the painters nowadays are, just, are so talented. It's it's crazy. It's just re it's really like a work of art from them. And um, yeah, I'm sure I'll uh, make some cool ones coming up, hopefully. Yeah, the hologram aspect is a new thing that is so cool. And you can see that on your design, too, the, the sea with the tomahawks is kind of intertwined throughout the entire thing the technology for making these things is unbelievable so yeah it looks awesome and keep them coming man it's great um we appreciate you coming on that you've been super generous with your time uh so thank you and keep up the good work in rockford and uh before you know it, we'll be seeing you up here in chicago we'll be bothering you in the locker room every day <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah thanks for having me i, I right. appreciate the time i had a lot of fun all right drew thanks man thank we you, appreciate drew. it have a awesome. good one that is uh rockford and future blackhawks goalie Drew Camesso breaking a little bit of news with us there that uh, number 29 will go to the rafters in Rockford uh, for eternity. Corey yeah, Crawford. we weren't 100% yeah. sure what the ring of honor entailed, but apparently, I mean, it, I think it came pretty obvious when he swapped numbers yeah. all of a sudden that the 29, but you know what? That's pretty cool. If he could be this generation's Corey Crawford, we'll hey. retire, we'll retire 33 in Rockford one day too. That's, yeah, I'm totally fine for that. And it'll yeah. be for Camesso and not Scott Darling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No other goalie has worn 33 with any success that I can recall. Nope. Except Patrick Waugh. Never. Uh, well, <laughs> you know. He was okay. He was all right. He, he was, was okay. okay. He was okay. If you if you liked wins and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, talking with Drew is awesome. Like he's he's a a, a very uh thoughtful guy. Um I'm I'm really looking forward to watching his career develop. He's off to a great start in Rockford for sure. Um and yeah, I mean, it's 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 there's no denying that he is uh He's got some expectations on him from the fan base and, and the organization too about you know his potential uh, future place with the with the org. But you know I think the trajectory he's on is is, is pretty good through his his uh, college career. He's had a lot of experience internationally already, uh, even before he made his uh, pro debut and everything. So I'm looking forward to to seeing uh, to seeing how Drew uh, progresses. For sure. And uh, when Drew wants to make a sandwich and, and, and keep the, his self a transition. fit and trim, <laughs> he starts with the hero bread. I don't know if he does, but he should. He should. I know hero bread is my favorite bread on the market. Uh, there's been a lot of times where I've, I've you're not going to believe this, but I've tried to cut carbs. I've tried to eat healthy. And you get some of those uh, zero carb breads, those, those light breads, and they, they taste like garbage and nothing is worse than you're making a nice big sandwich and the bread sucks because then you got garbage because then you have you, you bad got a bad sandwich, sandwich right yes. the, your sandwich is only as good as the bread correct and a hero bread you can make amazing sandwiches while doing better health wise <clears throat> if you need a low carb option to fit your lifestyle di dietary constraints founder cold glass baked 100 muffins per day before he found the perfect a blend that fit his allergy constraints, that's what those pushed him. <laughs> exactly. Where are those all it. going? <laughs> None Steve of them got sent of here. <laughs> it's a lot of muffins, but he found the perfect recipe, and it caused him to uh, that pushed him to start Hero Bread. The taste and texture is amazing with Hero Bread. Not like those other quote healthy breads. It's soft. It's fluffy. It's got great taste. Dare I say, it's scrumptious. Oh, it also gives you high fiber ultra low net carbs and zero grams of sugar per slice and best awe of all you are going to get 10 percent off at hero.co just for being a chgo listener hero makes sliced breads they make buns they make tortillas so no matter what kind of sandwich like food you want to have hero has the foundation for you they're available over at hero.co and amazon fewer calories in the national leading brands Five to ten grams of protein per serving. That's lots of protein. So right now, Hero Bread is offering the CHGO family 10% off their first order. And all you got to do is go to hero.co and use the promo code CHGO for your save on your Hero Bread today. That's H-E-R-O dot C-O to save 10-O percent O today -o. <laughs> And if you drop your sandwich on the floor, that sucks. But if it's a floor from Empire today, you can pick it right up. Five second rule does not apply. They have sandwich saving technology at Empire today. I don't know if that's true, but I'm just going <laughs> to go with it because it sounds good <laughs> and they should make it. Not a guarantee. Uh, hey, with Empire today, you get shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs. 
quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire Today is the best place to get new flooring. And because of that, they've got a lot of bad places trying to copy them, but they cannot beat Empire on quality, service, or speed. So instead, they advertise low-quality products that Empire simply refuses to carry. Empire is not going to promise you the lowest price because anyone that does that is putting flooring in your home that they would not put in theirs. Empire is obsessed with giving you the best floors possible. And one way they do that is with their virtual floor designer. It's a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. Just snap a picture of the room and instantly see how new floors will look in your room. Empire prides themselves on convenient shop at home service. They help customers shop for floors where they use their floors so they can see exactly what their new floors will look like in their homes, lighting and decor so they can make an informed decision. Schedule a free in-home estimate today. All CHGO listeners can receive $350 off when they use the promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash CHGO for details. That was fun. That was a good interview. It's fun. Yeah. I tweeted out the Crawford thing. Do it. Is we going to get him in trouble? I don't want to get him in trouble. Oh, uh, well, it's it's too late now. Well, I can always it's delete it. It's been said. I can delete it. <laughs> Have you guys run into the Jackson Stauber fanboy on Twitter yet? I have uh, not. No? Okay. It's you not. will. It's been a rough few weeks for him. <laughs> is it, you, is it Jackson anytime Stauber? Anytime you say anything about Drew Comesso, this guy jumps in and, Stauber's better. Mm, the uh, stat sheet proves the exact <laughs> opposite. <laughs> Don't let facts get in the way. I mean, hopefully both of them will be bi- will be good. I like him. Jackson Stauber. He is a good kid. Yeah. Uh, but he has not been great so far this year, and Drew Comesso has been great. So uh, Yes. Good luck with that argument going forward. I hope I hope, I hope he makes more of a case. Yeah, yeah, but right now it's pretty one sided. Yeah, Drew Kamezo's point, got a uh, almost ninety two save percentage, and that's good. Uh, Jackson Stauber is at like eighty eight. Ooh, not that's good. Not great. Not great. Not good. Yeah. Not ripping on Jackson Stauber. I like no. him. I hope he does good. But I wouldn't put all your eggs in the Jackson Stauber is the future of the franchise basket. I would not either. I wouldn't even buy that basket, let alone put eggs in it. <laughs> would you put hero bread in it? Uh, speaking of futures no, of the that franchise. that basket shouldn't exist. <laughs> um, a little bit of news out of practice yesterday. Uh, looks like Lucas Reichel is going to be back at center uh, between panic, Tyler Johnson panic, panic, and panic, Taylor panic. Radish. And I'm going to write about this this week for my Blackhawks beat. Um, I'm going to get some quotes of practice tomorrow and try to put something together. If the Hawks had not drafted Connor Bedard, and thank the hockey gods they did. Um, Lucas Reichel would be the main story this season. It would be the player we'd be watching the most closely, maybe him and Kevin Korchinski. But he would be the focus of most of the NHL games we're watching. Mm -hmm. Right now he has two assists and has been pretty much a non-factor all year. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this in some post-game shows and stuff, but I don't... I'm not ready to say, like, it's not going to work out with him, but we are getting to the point of concern for me where the production to assists with all the opportunity he gets, there's got to be more. Uh, I'm not uh, absolutely not going the route of bust whatsoever because we've seen better from him. We know that it's we know that it's there. Um, It's just what's going to make it, you know, come to the surface and and i think i think there is you know there's there's something to be said about confidence and he doesn't seem like a guy who is is rattled all that much but last season when he came to the blackhawks uh i think it was his second or might have been his third did he have three trips last year it was either two I or three. I think it was three. Uh, yeah, one three. was just that one. That's week. right. Yeah. One, one was, was the like, like one game. Where yeah. was he was sick. here for 12 hours. Yeah, yeah right. Taves had the flu, but then it turned out he was gone for like ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it was when he was, it was his third trip up here, and it was like, no, you're going to finish the season here. That was a confidence boost. Mm-hmm. He was in the lineup regularly. He was producing. That's always a confidence boost. So I, I think there's something to be said for when the production can start coming a little bit more regular, the, I, I think there will be a floodgates factor to it. He had a great play uh, in the game on Sunday to set up the first goal of the game, so hopefully that's part of that that snowballing. 
I just don't think him at center is part of that confidence boost, though. Because I, 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 I think he can do it. I just don't know if doing it right now, uh, the way that he's been playing, is is has been beneficial for him. I I think playing on the wing, as as crazy as it sounded, you know, I don't think we talk enough about how Jason Dickinson seems to be like every time someone randomly is playing with Jason Dickinson, Taylor Hall, Lucas Reichel, um, Taylor Radish. Like I feel like the times that Jason Dickinson plays with someone that you're trying to like get going or, or falls down the lineup, they all of a sudden play better. I think we need to talk about that more. Maybe maybe Just on another general, day, but it, I mean, but it feels like Jason Dickinson is like weirdly like the, the, the restarter for a lot of these players. He's just a guy that does everything right, and what he lacks in like elite skill set or speed or whatever. No, he's, you know, faster he's faster than Nathan, than Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon. Yeah. Says science, mm-hmm. according to science. Don't argue with facts. Um, he makes up for in, in – being in the right position, being in the right yeah. play, sticking with the system. And that's like, there's a lot to be said for that. Like, that's why systems work. Yeah. Right? Like, that's why you look at a guy like Luke Richardson, who, not the same position, defenseman, obviously, but was able to stick in the league for a long time because he was sound positionally, understood the system, understood the game, and was able to make a long career out of that, despite being not the fastest skater mm-hmm. or strongest guy or whatever. Like, that's it. That's the that's the what can equalize you to more skilled guys is you're able to play a system well. And Dickinson does it well. He he's a north and south player, which is what they're looking for here. But but I I hope and and Reichel look and, and the giggity said it in the chat in the chat like three games at wing he's got two points, eleven games at center he's got none. Yeah. Why are we moving him back to center? I don't know. Maybe this is the vote of confidence that Luke thinks that he needs. But for me. Like as a reward to go back to I center? I guess. But again, like last game, we he was a nominee for our, one of our four stars because he had a solid game, but end of the day, he had one shot attempt. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, he has to be more of a factor offensively. Yeah, You can talk all you want about him improving you know, his, his play. It all ends at the ice, and he has. There's no question about that. But Lucas Reichel is not here to be Marcus Kruger. He was not drafted to be Marcus Kruger. He doesn't have it in his DNA to be Marcus Kruger. So he has to start putting pucks in the net, on the net, or on the tape of someone who does put it in the net. And so far this year, he's not done it. Yeah, uh, two points in 13 games is is concerning. He's not killing the team playing center. He's not. No. He's not, you know, definitely not have any impact you want him, considering he had – Seven goals and 15 points in 23 NHL games last year. That's, that's great. That's the guy that we thought we were getting at the start of this year. And the guy who was nearly a point per game in two that's seasons. The guy that made me declare yeah. he was leading this team in points last right. year. Right. Before yeah. the draft But lottery, if 15 but and 23 is his career pace, that's a win. That's, that's, you take that That's easy. a first-round yeah. hit. Yeah, exactly. And that's the guy we were hoping, dare I say, expecting to see since the start of this season. And it hasn't been there yet. But – that doesn't mean that 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 guy doesn't exist anymore and isn't going to show up at some point. I'm 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 not ready to throw in the towel on a 21 year old kid playing in his first NHL season, right. mostly at a position he's never that right. Well, he's not play, has a whole lot of experience at this level anyway. But playing a, a center position in the NHL for a 21 year old is difficult. Mm-hmm. It's difficult for Connor Bedard at times. Yeah, who's, who's sure. an all world player. Um, you know, the putting him at wing, you know, he got the two points in three games, looked a little more effective. I, I thought the the Panthers game on Sunday was his best game of the season, at least where mm-hmm. he was the most noticeable as far as offensively. That's what you need him to be. You need him to be an offensive creator. Um, I'm not worried. I don't want him to be I, – I mean, I do want him to be a 200-foot player at some point, but that's not why you drafted him where you drafted him. No. If that's what he develops into with – that offensive ability, and then you've got yourself a superstar. So I, I'm not exactly sure why the move is back to center. I know that they don't want to give up. And I'm, and I'm and again, I said it all last year. This is the season to find out. Sure. And yeah, you don't, you're not going to know 11 games. Right. Like, there is no pressure this year for playoffs to win. So this is the time to find out. At some point, I do want to see him with Kershev and Anthony Sioux. Now Anthony Sioux hurt again. Yeah. So who knows what that is about 
He didn't skate at all yesterday. The Hawks will be back on the ice tomorrow. We'll get an update. At some point, I either want to see that Kershev, Anthony C. Reichel line because that line clicked last year. It yeah. looked really good in preseason. Mm -hmm. Or give him a couple games on that Bedard line. I know yeah. Kershev and Felino are, are, are doing real well. It's hard to take those guys off the line when he's got four goals and six points in his last two games mm -hmm. with those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to say, well, Nick, you've been doing a great job, but you got to <laughs> take a back seat because we got to get Lucas Reichel going. Right, right. So you don't want to mess up that chemistry. But at some point, every line kind of runs its course. I think if Nick Foligno understands that, too. Well, yeah, that's he's the guy you would – he'd be like, cool, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard to make that move right now. So you got to, you know, just, just got to ride it out. They're not punishing him at all because I don't think he's been bad. He's just not producing, not producing points. Yes. It's one thing if he's not producing points – and is a complete liability defensively or just dogging it out there, making dumb plays, no. taking penalties, no. hurting your team. No, no. He's not hurting the team outside of not producing points. So they're not punishing him. They're not taking away – like, they're not mad at him, and I think that's good. I agree. Like they, they're yeah. keeping him confident. He looks like a kid that still – you know, you see him in the locker room. He gets – Obviously frustrated at times because he knows he's better he wants than that. yeah he has he knows said he's that better he, than two points in thirteen games yeah he has said that he gets frustrated when the production isn't there so he's 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 internally motivated to to get it there but I think yeah I think being being in different positions you know it's uh, there's different responsibilities that you have to you know attend to but as, who, as a center who, who knew that Philip Kurashev was so valuable that he just makes everybody. Their that's absolute best. You that's put great. Kershev with Lucas Reichel. Lucas Reichel looks like a superstar. How about a? You put uh, Kershev with Connor Bedard and Connor Bedard yeah. are like the best player in the NHL. How about Reichel on the left, Dickinson in the middle, and Kershev on the right? Right. Put the two fixers with Reichel, and he'll there be, you go. He'll, yeah. he'll lead the team in points. And, and Philip has a good point. <laughs> Trevor Zegras, who is everybody's next superstar, he's got two points right now. Yeah, he's, I dropped him from my fantasy team. I was like, I've had enough of this. Well, he's in. He's off my show, team too. Show show Boaten punk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, not all your points can be Michigan's. Yeah, so, you punk. know, team, guys struggle. Guys go through cold streaks. It's magnified when it happens at the start of the season. Mm -hmm. You know, look what's going on with the Oilers. I mean, that's a dumpster fire, but it seems to be correcting itself. Nothing to do with the coaching change, I don't think. Yeah. But but they went, you know, a stretch where they were 2-9-1. and one. Had they gone 2-9-1 and one in the month of February when they were, you know, already secured a playoff spot, nobody would – freak out as much as they are now right yeah. so if lucas reichel started off hot and say had 10 points in his first 13 games and then had a, a stretch of 13 games where he had only two points i don't think the panic you're, would be you're less worried much. about it because you've already seen right it. yeah yeah right. it's I, hard I'm, it's hard to carry that i'm not I, I don't want to say i'm panicked I, there's no. no part of me that thinks he's going to be a bust i just i feel like it had like i said if bedard was not here it would be a way bigger focus and a way bigger story. And it's and all eyes would be on it. Like last year, when we talked about games, because none of them mattered and there was no one there that mattered except Reichel, mm -hmm. he was kind of the foe. It was like Reichel's corner, right? Yeah, like it been, we yeah. spent every post game talking about how did Lucas Reichel look tonight? Ooh. And it would have been the story and the fact that Keep going. he's got two <laughs> points, one is a secondary assist. It's like, all right, the yeah. point's got to come. And I, and I worry. Not so much about him, like, long-term, but in the short-term, like, for a lot of these guys, this is the probably the first time in his life he's gone through something like this. Playing in Germany, played his way up to being a first-round pick. Went to Rockford, played great, was their leading scorer, point per game. It, the game came easy to him. Even last year with the call-up, once he got a consistent run, he was producing at, like, a 53, 54-point pace. Great. This is probably the first time... He has faced any sort of adversity with an expectation. Yeah. At, and how is he reacting? And look, yeah. and your point is correct. On the ice, he is not sulking. He's not cutting corners. He's doing everything they're asking him to do, which speaks to his character, which speaks to the coaches on his team. He's still got his head up, and he's still doing the best he can. Like you said, the Florida game, probably his best overall game, and I agree with that. But at some point, the production got, has to come for his sake, mm -hmm. in my mind. I want to make two quick points. Three quick points. If it wasn't Bedard and they took Adam Fantilli, maybe second or third, Fantilli's funhouse 
would have been a, okay, a, sure. nice, a nice segment. Uh, but the two more important points I want to make is um, one thing with like development paths and giving these guys time. And we, we all had expectations for Reichel. We all want, wanted him this year. And we saw the potential uh, for him to be like a 40 to 50 point player this year if, if, if things went really well. Those were the, the, the hopes and expectations for us. But it also is important to to preach patience because I think one thing that with a lot of these young players in this, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23 year old range is the, 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 the impact that uh, the COVID shutdowns and everything had on development of, of athletes in, in this time frame. Just look at a lot of these players from that, uh, that 2020 draft class, Lafreniere, Byfield, uh, Sanderson, Drysdale, Marco Rossi, Cole Perfetti, uh, Reichel is included in that. A lot of these guys have taken a longer development it's than true. some top end first round picks because a lot of them lost full or half seasons of, of hockey in formidable years as as teenagers. And Lafreniere specifically, the top pick of that of that draft class, first three seasons in New York had high expectations, low production, and people were in the what last season and a half throwing him into trade. Uh, yeah, trade scenarios and rumors and all this stuff and calling him a bust. Eleven points in fourteen games this year. So playing with Artemi Panarin helps too. Sure, but he played with him before. But I think, I, I think a lot of patience is is a good thing to be to be preached. Yeah. And as as frustrated as we we are with Reichel's lack of production, uh, right out of the gate, I think your point is your point about you know when it's happening right. is, is 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 true. So. It's tough to see him come out of the gate in a year where a lot of people have expectations on him and two points in 13 games. But as we get through November into December, you know, maybe as, as the season goes on, he just needs a little bit of a kickstart and we see, you know, a run of 10 points in 10 games or something like that. And we all forget about how the season started. So I, I think that's, that's one of the things too, is with, with these guys in this age range, um, it might take, you know, they might all be one season behind, you know, yeah. where, where you would normally expect some of these players to be. And, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, and, you know, patience. You mentioned the word patience. This is what the Blackhawks have right now. They have and it's what the fans need to have. I know getting Connor Bedard, you're like, oh, okay, that's it. it. Game it, over. Uh, bring, well. bring in the, you know, <laughs> bring in the playoffs bring in the Stanley Cup we're we're a good team now because we have this one guy hockey doesn't work that no. way and our general manager in front office has has definitely proven that they are long-term thinkers mm -hmm. and patience 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 you need it like I even had people today when I uh, tweeted out that Drew Camesso was a man of show he should be up here Arvid Soderblom stinks put Drew Camesso in now like no we live in a very no reactionary there are culture. zero <laughs> expectations to succeed this year and probably none next year right these are where that patience comes in let it all play out but your, con you your concerns and your worries are justified at some point we need to start seeing that guy yeah. that we saw last season otherwise the conversation goes down a different road well, i think yeah. also like his successful end of last season is part of what built those expectations yeah, yeah of course because it was like okay he's here now because we saw a couple of call-ups year before, a couple of call-ups last year, and you're like, all right, there's not – you see the flashes, but there was never any sustained, you know, greatness. And then all of a sudden, that third call-up, after all the trades are made, he's looking good, and you're like, there it is. There's yeah. the guy. But like we said about Taylor, some on a shit team, someone has to score. You're not going to get shut out every night. There's a – Three bobbleheaders, three uh, Russian nesting dolls right here that prove that fact. Mm. Tyler Ernest and Kyle Calder and Mark Bell, those teams sucked. They were the happened to be the three best players on the team, so they led the team in scoring. They went elsewhere and did nothing, Yeah, right? Like someone has to put the puck in the net because, again, you're not going to lose every game something to nothing, right? Unless you're the Sharks. <laughs> Right, oh, but wait, 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 wait. here's a simple <laughs> fix. Yeah, Here, hey, two in a row, buddy. Uh Galvanized. Here's a simple, simple uh, <laughs> fix for Lucas Reichel that I think could be done immediately, and it, and you could play him at center, you could play him whatever wing, wings you want at at five on five. Rocket skates. 
Put him on the top power oh. play unit. Damn, I thought you were going to say rocket skates. Sure. Put him on the top power play with rocket skates. Oh, that's doubly awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Corey Perry. I can't believe I've said that. <laughs> but I love Corey wow. Perry. Clip that. But I just glitched like, whoa. <laughs> but <laughs> why is he on the top power play unit? He's your second leading scorer. Okay. Yeah. Do you need both Felino and Corey Perry on the top power play unit to kind of do the same thing? They do kind of do the same thing. So put thing, Lucas right? Reichel yeah, out true. there. Let that's Lucas true. Reichel get out there with Seth Jones and and Connor Bedard. And maybe he pots a couple of power play goals. All of a sudden, the floodgates open and he know he all of a sudden goes, you know what? I can't score in this league. Yeah. All I got to do is shoot the damn puck. I, I, I dream of the chaos that Reichel and Bedard would create together with all their weaving and mm-hmm. positional changes and switching and puck movement. Like, you would just tie the defense in knots with those two on the ice. Yeah. And maybe that overcomplicates a power play, and that's maybe a question for Luke, is if you got two guys who are puck carriers primarily, does that present a problem in the power play? I don't know the answer to that. We'll ask Luke tomorrow. Mm. But I, I just, you know, I, to me, if I'm thinking that from a penalty killer's perspective, that's an effing nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Where is he? Oh my God. Where'd he go it's now? Where's open Bedard? Up some Where? lanes. Yes. Someone's gonna be standing there wide open yes. with a prime scoring chance. Yeah. But nobody around him. I'm I'm gonna ask Luke that tomorrow. At I I dream of the chaos was great at Riot Fest, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of the they chaos. Such, they were on such a bad time though. They, there's so many other things going on <laughs> yeah. at that time. It was I, 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 and get, set, yeah, ironically I enough. Uh speaking of chaos, tomorrow at two thirty, we're gonna chat with DJ Bean. And Pete Blackburn of the What Chaos podcast. There, one of the, one or both of them will join us every Wednesday at two thirty as we do our around the league show. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna get back to Reichel here, but just a little sidebar, and I want to save it primarily for tomorrow. But Nikita Zadorov all of a sudden now becomes this guy that every team must have. He's got Maple Leafs telling him, "You're exactly what we need on our team." And he's demanding trades. Is this the same? And I liked him when he was here. I think I was the one dude, if you ask my old podcast partner, James DeVoe, who was the last guy on earth sticking up for Nikita Zadorov, it was me. But Nikita Zadorov is not he's, saving anyone. He's season. not uh, helping a team that sucks at defense get any better yes. at defense. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. He's getting the Ben Sherat treatment. Yeah. Like, oh, you're available? Oh, you must be the best available then. Yeah, my God. I, I mean, if yeah. anybody's willing to give up. A high draft pick for Nikita Zadorov. I like him as a dude. I like that he is outspoken. I like that he's got personality. He's a great character guy for a locker room. And he's sure. a good player, but he's not the kind of guy that's going to go and save the Maple Leaf season. The, that's or, ridiculous. Yeah. No, or the Oilers. No. There's another guy that will take bad penalties. They got a whole roster full of those guys. Oh, and if you want to get Austin Matthews or Connor McDavid lit up, just wait for one of those Nikita Zadorov hand grenade passes that he puts right at the skates that they got to look down at to receive. Yeah, not uh, uh, Again, I like the guy, but what are we talking? It, it's funny, like, guys go to Canada and they become, like, this different level of hockey yeah. player. Like, mm-hmm. he's a dude. He's a dude. He's a middle, a middle pair guy at best. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I saw that and was like, yeah, we can talk a Maple Leafs Pete player about. said that you're the key to their season? All right. Well, then your season is effed. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Yeah, we that can, was interesting. We can talk with uh, Pete. And I'd like Jay to get their uh, take on that. Yeah. And we can ask Pete how he got so yoked. Yes. Because if you want to look like Pete Blackburn I gotta look that uh, up. I and, that and be super jacked. Like if you drew Matt Damon from memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you may not want to uh, be envious of his height. He's a short king. Yeah. Um, but those guns he's got, those are, those are pretty impressive. Uh, you can go to the Midtown Athletic Club and get yourself in shape. Uh, you can go to any of their four Chicagoland locations. Uh, they got one in Palatine, Bannockburn, uh, Willowbrook, and, of course, the Midtown Athletic Club and Hotel in the middle of Bucktown and Lincoln Park. That is their uh, flagship location. Tremendous amenities. Uh, the Palatine location... Uh, They went through a multi-million dollar transformation of the club and will be completed in early 2024. Now, we were on a a phone call with our friends at the Midtown Athletic Club. They wanted to make sure people understood the Palatine location is open. It is pretty much 90% functional right now. Uh, But other things are uh, opening throughout the rest of this year and early into uh, as the the year turns over. I know a lot of people make uh, New Year's resolutions about 
eating healthier with Hero Bread and getting into shape with the Midtown Athletic Club, you can still do that at the Palatine location. Uh, it'll just be 2024, first few months. Everything will be open and renovated by that point. Uh, and there's something for everybody uh, at the Midtown Athletic Club. There are uh, hundreds of classes to choose from. You got spin classes, yoga classes, uh, CrossFit, boxing, tons of different things that you can do there. Uh, they also, what I learned uh, in, a, in that call with the Midtown Athletic Club, is they have child care. So if you're someone like me who has a young child that you can't really cart around too easily, uh, if you want to go to the Midtown Athletic Club and you want to get your workout in, but you know you either are you know on on parent duty for the uh, for, for the time being, you can take them to the Midtown Athletic Club. They got childcare uh, available, so the kid will be looked after and and Your have have a good time. Yeah, you they got little baby yeah, training CC training on the machines, bench, man. Yeah, just do like what Luke did in Empire Strike Back and just strap him in the back. <laughs> that that is also an option. You know, you could put you could throw on the baby Bjorn and, and get on the treadmill, but uh uh Midtown Athletic Club they have that available, so it's great for uh families with kids, young kids, older kids. Uh they got a lot of different programs there. There's uh there's spa and sauna, so if you want to uh get a massage, go, go in, in, in the sauna. You can do that. Uh, they also have uh, restaurants at uh, most of their locations, but the Midtown Athletic Club uh, here in the city of Chicago, their, their Bucktown and Lincoln Park location, uh, they got a full restaurant. And I told you guys about this. You'd be very interested uh, to try their uh, very famous fried chicken sandwich. At the Midtown Athletic Club restaurant, so that would what be. Makes you think that me and Greg are interested in fried chicken sandwiches. Well, even though you see us eat four of them a week, we'll yeah, and your, your other podcast <laughs> kind of gives it away too. Um, so there's something it's for everybody. Be a really good sandwich if it's going to get me to go into an athletic club to eat it. <laughs> Listen, you can go. You can go have a sandwich, sit in the sauna, and that's that counts as going to the gym. So I like, so you like that. that. I like think. Can I eat the sandwich in the sauna? Uh, I, I, you could try. It's just like dripping blood, like <laughs> buffalo sauce on my chest. Like, don't mind that. You could try. It'll burn off. Uh, <laughs> you could always try it once. But, uh, yeah, tons of things uh, to check out at the Midtown Athletic Club, plus a lot of uh, tennis courts that are available, indoor and outdoor pools. They got everything. Head yeah. over to midtown.com slash chgo and find out more about the Midtown Athletic Club nearest to you. And you can schedule a tour uh, both online and in person, and uh, check it out. It's a good time. Getting her damn money's worth on that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Woo. Uh, speaking of uh, checking things out, if you're super confident that Lucas Reichel is going to score his first goal of the season Thursday night, then download the Circus Sports app and get your bet in now, that, and you're going to win big bucks, I'm sure. Why? Because game, uh, the tight money line and splits over at Circus Sportsbook are better than any of their competitors. Games will strive to be a minus 110 split. On the uh, Circus Sports menu, unlike other sports books, which may or use uh, one minus one fifteen or minus one twenty splits. Plus, Ooh. Circus Sports keeps as little money as possible for their large markets bets, like futures, golf tournaments. So, throw in a f- couple shekels of that uh, Connor Bedard uh, leading the league in goals. It's like in How the thousands. That, that's a that's a value bet right there. Plus five thousand. That's what five, I heard yeah, today. Yeah, plus 5,000 for Conor Bedard to lead the league in goals. That's 50, worth... 56 goal pace might get it done. That's worth a few bucks, especially at Circa, because they keep as little money as possible on those types of bets. Circa also does not limit players based on the winning players. Every player has the same s- limits, unlike other sports book who like to punish you for being really good at sports betting. That's <laughs> not my problem. We encourage bettors <laughs> to download and explore all sports betting apps available and compare the lines from each sports book. And then you're going to go back to Circa where they also have the best customer service. There are real people behind the Circa sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion. Unlike those other books who use chat bots and chat bots suck. All aspects of the app are being run by the same team that runs the main Circa sports book at Circa resort and casino in Las Vegas. They're sitting by the pool answering your questions. So download the Circus Sports Illinois app at circusports.com slash Illinois app to sign up today. Also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER, text GAMB to 833-234, or visit areyoureallywinning.com. And if you're not feeling confident in working out or gambling... 
Maybe you need some beer. Just drink. Get sure. that confidence up a little bit, and you're going to want to get it from our friends beer at muscles. Goose Island Beer Company. <laughs> we are supported by Ball Goose Island Pearls. Beer Company, Chicago's beer since 1988 when I was just a, a young lad. Little mite. Uh, Oktoberfest, the Beer Hug Family, 312 Wheat Ale, the Full Pocket Pills. How about the Green Line? That, I think the Green Line is my favorite. It's the Green Line or the 312, but who's who am I to decide? That Blackhawks Pale Ale is out, the Bowling Goose. So much great stuff available from Goose Island. Check them out. Grab an ultra fresh brewery exclusive beer at Goose Island's original brew house on Clyburn Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in West Town. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer. We're back tomorrow, 2.30, with Pete and DJ from the What Chaos Podcast. Join us. We'll talk more shit about Nikita Zadorov on the <laughs> CHGO Blackhawks Podcast. <laughs> City like the mayor. 